Selecting the right individuals for special operations training is a critical process. It's not just about finding those with the physical stamina to endure the rigors of training, but also the mental fortitude, intelligence, and integrity to become successful operators. This video explores the reasons why special operations communities invest heavily in selecting the right candidates, and then we'll have a quick discussion about how to use this information to do better at selection. I'll never forget making a life-changing decision during Special Forces Assessment and Selection, or SFAS, better known simply as Selection. It was mid-January, and I was trying to cross a swamp to get to a land navigation point on the other side. The water was ice cold, about up to my belly button, if you know what I mean. We started the land navigation course about 02 in the morning, so I had been walking through the dark as fast as I could for about four hours. I was carrying about a 50 pound ruck, a seven pound plastic rifle, and the sun was just starting to pop up and provide a little bit of light. So there I was. Why in the world am I doing this? I thought to myself, is this really what I want to do with my life? I could think of a hundred reasons to quit right there on the spot, but I didn't. And because I didn't quit when the going got tough, or cold, I was starting to prove to myself and the cadre that I just might be the type of soldier worthy of investing in. As you can imagine, special operations training is a costly endeavor, both in terms of resources and time. So obviously, the goal of selection is to ensure that those selected are good investments. The special operations community looks for individuals who possess attributes that justify this investment. These attributes include physical strength, mental toughness, intelligence, self-motivation, and trustworthiness. Let's start with strength. Physical fitness is a cornerstone of special operations training. The selection process is designed to push candidates to their limits, testing their readiness and commitment. Only those who demonstrate exceptional physical strength and endurance are considered suitable for the intense demands of special operations. I've already made a video about how strong do I need to be for SOF, and another video about how fast do I need to be for special operations. And if you're still in doubt, then take my special operations fitness test to see where you compare. And if you're cocky and think that you're ready to start training today, then buy my workout program, Special Operations Fitness, Hell Week. It's an eight day gut check that will give you an idea of what you need to be able to do on a typical week during special operations training. It's so much better to quit a few days into a $20 workout program than a few weeks into a three year enlistment. Let's move on to mental strength. I always like to say that special operations training is mental but it's mentally challenging through the physical challenges. This is because special operations are mentally demanding, and so the selection process must replicate mentally challenging situations. Candidates must show that they can endure the hardships of training, and this is a precursor to the even greater challenges that they will face in the battlefield. Mental toughness is essential for overcoming adversity and maintaining focus in high-stress situations. And if you want to learn more about having the champion mindset of the most elite men on earth, then check out my best-selling product, Special Operations Mindset, which is available as a paperback, an audiobook, an ebook, and as an online course. Special operations require individuals who are not only physically and mentally tough, but also intelligent and trainable. Most selections teach you a few skills. If you can't even learn simple things like tying knots or land navigation and demonstrate mastery of these simple skills while physically and mentally tired, then there's no hope for you to learn hard, more important and complex special operations skills. Special operations teams operate with a high degree of autonomy, requiring members to be self-motivated and internally driven. The selection process screens for individuals who do not need external motivation or constant supervision. If you need your mom to ensure that you don't sleep through your alarm in the morning, then you're not the type of person we're looking for. 
If you need an accountability partner to remember to go to the gym, then you're not the type of person we're looking for. Those who require constant pushing and prodding are unlikely to thrive in the dynamic and often unpredictable environments special operations teams operate in. Trust is the foundation of any successful team, especially in special operations, where lives are at stake. The selection process includes integrity checks to ensure candidates are trustworthy and ethical. Violating rules during training, even seemingly minor ones like talking to a colleague or walking on a road during land navigation, demonstrate a lack of integrity and can disqualify a candidate from further consideration. Let's finish up with a quick discussion about how to use this information to do better at selection. If selection is designed to ensure that you're strong enough, then arrive in world-class shape. Don't arrive in good shape, arrive as a beast. Be able to ruck like it's your job, because it kind of is. If selection is mental through the physical, then arrive mentally prepared. Do your research about what to expect Rehearse, train, be prepared. Do and accomplish hard things to build mental toughness. Know your purpose, be intense, be prepared. If the cadre during your selection are going to test you through a few skills, then master them beforehand, before you show up. Know your knots, be a great swimmer. Know small unit tactics, be a great marksman with a rifle and pistol. Know some self-defense or mixed martial arts, and be an expert at map and compass land navigation. Already being competent in all or many of these skills gives you one less thing to worry about. As I said, it's mental through the physical. Since the selection cadre is going to test to see how motivated you are, expect them to find new and inventive ways to test your resolve and commitment. Do and accomplish hard things, be prepared. And if the cadre want to verify that you're trustworthy, then simply play their games. Play by the rules. Be obedient. Selecting the right individual for special operations training is essential for building capability in effective teams. A rigorous selection process ensures that only those with the necessary physical, mental, and moral qualities are chosen. So if you don't possess these characteristics, then don't show up and don't waste anyone's time. But if you do possess these characteristics, then develop them even further and arrive prepared. Let me know what you think is the most important mindset or characteristic that the special operations community should be selecting for in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to join our Life as a Special Operations team. And don't forget to forward this video to a friend or family member who needs to see it. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?